Hello, welcome back. I hope you're having a good day. I wanted to make a video showing you guys how to make and crochet your own um, planner pouch. I have been selling these on my Etsy shop for a couple years and I haven't in a little while um, just because it takes, it does take a lot of time and I do work full time, but I want, thought it'd be a good idea just to show you a tutorial on how to make your very own. Um, all you need is yarn, a hook, your planner of course, scissors, and one of these tapestry needles. I know in the previous video I did with for the Cup Cozy, I kind of showed you guys a couple, um, stitches and this is another one where as long as you know how to do three or four stitches you can do this very easily <laughs> so i'm gonna try to keep my hands up here in frame so you can see i noticed in my last video i kept like retreating back so i'm going to yeah, i'll move the camera a little bit um that way you guys can see really nicely so first things you want to do is just see which way you want your planner pouch to go and that'll just determine how you're going to measure for the happy planner i'm going to put it in um side loading instead of the top loading because of the discs but either way you can do for your planner and i like to use the bernat um baby blanket yarn and you can find this at i think like even walmart but michael's joann's and or, or amazon just google it and this yarn is i think it is a size six it is a pretty chunky yarn and it'll work up your project really easily so it's kind of satisfying to try to work it up quickly and yeah this is kind of a pattern that I came up with that I thought looked nice and it's nice and tight but still gives it some texture so I use a size L or 8 millimeter hook with this yarn and the tapestry needle and the scissors you can kind of put to the side for now so I'm going to just kind of show you how to get started and measure everything. Okay, so I first like to, when I do these, start with your chain. So you're going to do your slip knot. And I go over the slip knot in my um, Cup Cozy video kind of slow so that's like how you could get started with this and then I'm just going to work up a foundation chain that is long enough to cover your planner and do a little bit of overhang so this will just depend on how big your um, planner is so I'm just working up chains and it is important, oops, it is important when you make your planner pouch that, I'm actually going to put this off to the side, because last time it was distracting me that I had the yarn pulling through the front of the screen. Um, you do just want to make sure that you're accounting for how large your planner is width-wise. So you just want this chain to be oops make sure that's not I just want everything nice and flat so just make sure your chain fits on your planner and it hangs off like this is stretchy yarn you'll see and you can use any yarn I do want to let you know that too you can use any yarn you want for these projects but this is really soft and comes in so many pretty colors so I like for it to overhang about, I would say a half inch on both sides. And that will give you some room because if you, you know, re recall that when you make something like this, I don't know you'd recall because you've probably never made this before. Please excuse me. I have such a bad headache right now. I need to like take some medicine, but I was just trying to drink water. But anyways, okay. So you just want it to hang over that way it will meet on both sides when we go to stitch it up. So just leave about a half inch on both sides overhang and we're ready to get started. So as long as you can do your chain, that's the pattern for this. So then we are going to start with the first um, chain on our um, foundation chain, not including 
this one right here. Also, don't get like too hung up on these details because I found that this is a really forgiving pattern. So if you skip, accidentally skip one or, you know, miss one, it really shouldn't be that big of a deal. But so we're going to do a single crochet in that chain. And then in the same one, we're going to do a, du a half double. And that's just when you yarn over and then you pull through all three. And then we're going to skip one and we're going to do the single crochet. And then I'll show you the half double again. Half double is when you yarn over, go back into that same stitch and then pull through all three and then skip one and single crochet and double crochet, I'm sorry, half double crochet into that next one. And that is literally the pattern for the entire thing. So what we're gonna do is do that all the way to the end. So I'm gonna do a couple rows with you. And of course I'll do my new editing because of my husband giving me that laptop. So now I can edit the video so you don't have to watch me just crochet for however long this takes, which it shouldn't take you too long, but if you're new to it, you know, give yourself grace. It might take you a little bit longer, but um, I hope you guys can see this color. I tried to pick a darker color that would show up instead of the white like I did for my cup cozies. It might have been a little bit hard to see. So, okay, so skipping one, going in the next with a single crochet and then a half double. Skipping one. And I think I mentioned this in my cup cozy tutorial too. The first round or the first row is always a little bit more tricky just because you're trying to fit your hook into that chain that first foundation chain and that can be a little bit tricky sometimes but then after this it's pretty much smooth sailing and then you are going to do as many rows of this as you need to and you'll be able to tell because you can fit it on your planner and you'll be able to kind of see and i'll give you some tips as we go along on how how the um how long the project should hang on your planner to give you um not too tight of a squeeze in there because that can be a problem with making these but when you make them yourself you're able to at least judge and nice thing is if you don't complete the project and sew up the sides you'll be able to fix it if you need to and then our last one we'll do the same thing one and then a half and then we're going to turn our work. So when you finish that side, you just literally turn it over. So that wasn't too bad. And like I said, that's literally the entire project. So Okay, so once you've turned your work, we're not going to chain one or anything like that. We're just going to go back and do the same thing to our second row. And this is just the repeat throughout the entire project. So go into, you're going to be working into these spaces. So if you count the chains, it should be just every other chain. So we're on this one, so we're going to work into this. But I find it easier just to find where that opening is. And then you put your hook in there and do your um, stitches. So same thing. So one single and then a double. One single and then a double. One single and then a double. And, and I'm saying half double. I mean, not double crochet, a half double crochet. trying to make sure that you can see this oh I hear my wind chime outside because it's windy uh, and I wish I felt better because it's like the perfect fall day outside but I just like I just have like a headache and I need a drink of water Jeez, I didn't know I was gonna drink like eight sips of water there um, 
but yeah I thought this color was really pretty for fall and I kind of wanted to do a white or a more neutral but I had this color and I just thought that this was so pretty so I'm gonna just do a couple rows with you and then I will use the magic <laughs> to jump ahead to show you how to um, crochet the side shut and then that's it and um actually I think I I don't even use the needle to do the sides. I actually just use my hook. So I showed that you would need a needle, but that wasn't correct. But you can use a needle. So um, if you do have the tapestry needle, don't fret because you can still use that. So this last one Looks like it's a little hard to get into that last one, but don't forget that one because that's how you might get uneven rows. You might, you know, if you skip this one, it'll start to get shorter and shorter. So you just want to feel in your stitch. It might feel weird. And again, this is where it's come, where it comes in handy to remember that like, just try your best because truthfully, if you put your hook in there or if you put it in there, Somewhere where there's a gap, it's really not gonna make that much of a difference. Like I'm not, I'm not that heavily a perfectionist and I just know that it's just not gonna make a, diff a big difference. So especially cause we're not using a chain, I found that if it's a little bit, um, you know, tighter here, that's okay. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, no worries. I just, um, for any of you that do crochet and work, questioning why I do the things the way I do that's just my logic but if you find a way that works better for you go with that it's just a very easy going project so let's let's keep going so again we're just looking for that next opening one single and then a half double so I'm gonna go into and do the same thing all the way across so I am hoping to maybe develop a better schedule for posting videos and coming up with some ideas. Um, I'm really excited because I guess I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I noticed I got to, I think 650 subscribers, which is really awesome because I just started to try to upload some more videos and noticing more people following and commenting and it's just it's so fun it makes me so happy I've been trying to stay off social media like Facebook more lately and I just find I just find content honestly just it's just too much sometimes like it's just it really does trigger me I hate to say that word when it's not if I'm using it inappropriately but I just sometimes I just see things that just put me in a bad mood and it just like upsets me for the rest of the day or like makes me feel bad and I don't want to feel bad I want to I don't I don't want to feel any type of way because of social media going off on a little rant there but I'm just I just want to be happy and again we're at that kind of finicky part so I am just putting my hook into there but yeah I've just been off Facebook and I just try to use um only things that make me feel happy which is like Instagram because it's mainly for my personal hobby you know planning and then I like Pinterest too and and yeah I just I just feel like if you let you know don't let like negativity into your life that's that's my main takeaway because I kept thinking like I had to have these social apps because everyone else does but no you don't you really don't like I miss the days before it sometimes and I feel lucky that I was in I grew up in a time before it right as it started but before it so I know what it was like to not have a phone all the way all all the time at your fingertips and yeah, life's hard enough even without it sometimes, so <laughs> I just, I didn't want that to sound depressing, I just want that to sound more so inspiring, like, you don't have to be on those sites, like, you don't have to engage in content or 
things that you don't want to. So, anyways, I was thinking about making some videos regarding um, my favorite planning system, like why I like discs. Also, I would love to do like a planner collection video because Oh, Lord knows I have a lot of planners. I have a lot. More so talking about, like, covers. Like, I have a lot of, like, covers. But I've used... I have a planner cart, and I would like to show that and do, like, a video on that. I have washi drawers. I would like to show, like, my washi collection. Like, I have some ideas for videos. So, I hope that I can start getting some of those out soon. I just want to make sure I do them, like, in a fun way and... I don't know. I'm thinking the next video I'll post will be about why I love discs, why I'm currently loving disc planners, and then maybe get into like my washi video, because washi tape is so pretty and fun. I love Simply Gilded. That's my favorite washi tape. And I've been loving the Happy Planner stickers, as you all know. And I've just been loving my planner so far. I really like how I did this week in my planner. As this week was my, me and my husband's first anniversary. And so I tried to make it like really pretty and just like fit the vibe that I love about this time of year. It's just like the pinks and the maroons, like the blushes, the golds, like that type of fall feel. I just love that. So as you can see, this works up pretty quickly. And before I go off and fin try to finish this, the length of this up, I'm going to just quickly go over where to kind of think about stopping and how to kind of measure this out. So you are gonna want this entire piece to go up a little bit above your planner because you do want it to protect it. So you want it to end a little bit, maybe like a half inch above the planner, like this. And it has to go on both sides, remember that. And then you'll also notice that it's gonna have to go around, you know, if you have whatever cover you have on it. So it's gonna have to go around these discs. So keep going, keep doing this until you have a piece of um, crochet that is covering up your entire planner with a little bit of overhang about a half inch or so and then we then I will show you how to sew up the sides and finish off your planner pouch planner pouch <laughs> now we've made it to the end so your finished project should cover up the entirety of your planner with a little bit of overhang nothing too crazy but just make sure that it isn't like all the way down here because when we tie or um seam the sides together it might lose a little bit of length there so that's perfect how it is. In fact, yeah, I think that's perfect. So this is how I do the side. So it's very easy and you just need your scissors and I use the crochet hook. I know I said the tapestry needle before, but I just use the crochet hook. So this side's easy because we have the yarn already attached on this side. So we're just going to be doing slip stitches. So that's just basically how we make the chain. We just don't yarn over or anything like that when we do these. So take your edge here and I just go into the uh, very corner stitch at the top. Just pop your hook on through 
and just pull your yarn right through. And then it's easier if you just kind of work um, side to side. So if it's easier for you to turn your project, go ahead and do that. So then you're just gonna go into this next kind of, it's not really a stitch, but you can tell it's like your next little um, stitch right there. And we're just gonna do that all along the side. So just take that and pull your yarn through and then pull your yarn through. And I find it easier just to work from the side. You don't have to like keep flipping. So we'll go into our very next little stitch area and just pull your hook through. Sometimes it can be a little tight, but just do the best you can. Just go through and pull through. We're not pulling any like yarn through like this. We're not yarning over, we're just going and pulling through. And again, it can be kind of difficult to get your hook in there. Just make sure you're getting just like one nice stitch length. You know, you don't want it to be too close to the edge. What I mean like that, you don't want to just like grab one stitch here. You kind of want it about like a stitch, stitch length in to the project. I hope that makes sense. Basically, you just don't want it to fall apart. So, you know, it's okay to put your hook into the, into the project a little bit. Through. And if you notice it gets a little tight, you can kind of give yourself a bigger loop to work with. But yeah, we're just gonna do this all the way through, all the way down the edge. And this, this does work up pretty quickly with this yarn, you'll see. And I did want to also mention this is like a good um, project for a tablet or a book. You just use the same method. Just make sure that um, when you measure it, just make sure that it has a little bit of overhang and it fits um, whatever you want it to cover nicely. Okay, and then the bottom here. kind of flatten that out and then when I cut the yarn I just leave a nice tail probably about like eight inches or so and pull the yarn through and then fasten it and now we're gonna go and do our other side so as you can see there's no yarn connected on the other side there so we're going to just put some yarn <laughs> on there just to connect that so we're gonna go in through that side and then our first stitch in the corner there. And then just attach some yarn to your hook and pull through. And I'm going to turn my work just so, it's just at an angle I'm a little bit more comfortable with working on. You could put the other yarn tail off to the side. There's two yarn tails there you can actually put to the side. And pop your hook through. Actually, put that yarn over there and do the same thing. So we're just gonna go along the edges. And again, you know, it might be a little frustrating sometimes with this chunky yarn, it can get stuck. Ooh, it's windy outside, that scared me. I heard like the house cracking. But yeah, if you notice it's like a little bit difficult to get your hook in there, you could work yourself up another loop. You can even do single crochets here too, but I feel like the slip stitch is just a little bit more secure, but single crochets actually work as well. So if you find this too difficult when you're starting off, feel free to just yarn over. That won't be the end of the world. And look through all the way to the end and we're almost done. The only thing that we have left after this is to weave in our ends. And then there's just like one more. I just put my hook at the corner there and then pull your yarn through and then leave a nice tail. And I always just like to leave um, more room for the tail than you think you need. Okay, so now let's weave in our edges. And with this side, since the yarn wasn't attached, I just like to kind of like pull it tightly. 
Not too tightly because you might cinch up your sides a little bit. But I'm going to tie this side before we weave it in. And actually that tapestry needle, if you do have one of those, might come in handy um, for weaving in the ends. But you can also use your hook as well. I'll show you like the needle. This was just like in my other video with the cup cozies. You could just take and have your ed edges go through, your ends go through, and that way they're not coming loose on you. But if you don't have one of these, you can absolutely still um, use your hook to get these ends in there real nice. And I like that the yarn you can really work with. You can um, kind of shape it how you want. So if when we're finished, we can kind of loosen it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna trim these edge, these loose ends. And then on this side, um, we don't really have a loose end there, but if you just wanna use your hook, you just can go right back up how you had before and just kind of fish that end piece through. Oh, that's not wanting to do that. There it goes. Just so it's, oops. This was easier said than done, right? Um, just so it doesn't just come loose on you. Go through a couple stitches and we'll trim that okay and so this is actually the um wrong wrong uh, side of our pouch so then we're going to take it and flip it inside out and there you go so this is your finished pouch and then you can put your planner inside and just make sure it fits i like to also, like I said, just kind of shape it up a little bit. There we go. Oh, it looks good. So again, so this yarn is kind of stretchy, so if you kind of have any edge, edge pieces here that you kind of just want to make sure they're tight, you can always, um, my pen loop was kind of sticking out a little bit there. Um, but yeah, you can always go back in and make sure that those are um, as tight as you need. But yeah, this is it. I really like how these turn out. I love how they can protect your planner if you throw it in your bag. Um, they're really comfy and cozy and you can wash them too. So that's nice to know if you need to, you can always wash them. And yeah, they just keep your planner nice and protected. And then of course, cute. <laughs> of course, us planner girls always like when things are nice and cute. And yeah, so if you need to, like I said, like you can stretch it out a little bit. But yeah, that's it. So it's super simple. Like I said, you just need to know a couple stitches and it's just a repeated pattern. And those are what the sides look like. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Stay cozy. Bye.